This game was played this morning. Um, a fair few hours ago now. And I saw some of it. So I saw some of the China, initial China build. This China player is not that, not that high elo. But obviously I saw Nagatoro as well. And this guy is uh, Prince, right? I think it's Prince. It might be Prince. might not be Prince. It might be someone else. Yeah, you, you just never know sometimes. Uh, but we know Nagatoro is a very, very top, um, top player. Very competent. Age of Empires free player. So, and he's playing Ethiopia, which honestly I regard as one of the best sieves in the game, like top five sieve in the game right now, if not higher than that. Uh, Ethiopia definitely kind of slept on. Uh, I'm not slept on, just that it's not really played that often. So, um, but yeah, and this is one of the reasons. So, look, we see China right now. No TP going for a starting monastery. What's that about? <sighs> A starting monastery. I'm print screening that right there. So this thing, for anyone who doesn't know, it, act, it does act like uh, it's a cross between a church because it gives a 0.7 trickle. And it also acts as a uh, dance hall or, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, because it can, uh, that's that's how China can make like the mercenary and outlaws. So it's, it's like a saloon. That's, that's what I'm looking for, the word I'm looking for. So... Yeah, but it's interesting why he's going for, for that. And it's something you can build in age one, apparently, um, rather than a TP. What's the reasoning behind it? I don't know. Don't know. Um, I guess because it's safer and it's diff more difficult to get taken down. And this isn't the safest TP. I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's his uh, thought process behind it. Unless we see mercenaries or outlaws from China, which uh, would would be interesting. Monastery always been an age one building? Question mark. Ungers. I, I don't know if you're telling me or you're asking the question, but um, pff, your, your guess is as good as mine. Xing Sha Mingling. Xing Sha Mingling. All right, first card's going to be the Tea Leaves Classic. One of the best cards in the game. You know, I've done a tier list of cards before, and that's definitely near the top because it is a fantastic card. And look at that deck. Look at that deck. If you ever want to predict what someone's going to do. And that's why that's one of the things I like these days is um, back in the day, I remember back in the day, like you would look at someone's cards and you really try and analyze someone's deck to see what they're going to do. And uh, but these these days, people don't care. It's almost like, right, I'm going to go industrial. My deck shows you I'm going industrial. So I know, you know, I know, but it doesn't matter. Cause I'm going to do it anyway. So just just come and just try and stop me, bruh. Just try and stop me, bruh. That, that's essentially uh, what the meta is these days with the industrial. And I fucking love it. <laughs> I just love it. Like, you both know what you're about to do. You all know. Uh, but but just come at me, bro. You know, just come at me. Okay, got a few, big, few bits of livestock. Just putting them around the village. Very, very nice. Okay, let's go have a look over at Nagatoro. Uh, looks like a pretty standard. This is a good deck. Uh, sorry, a good map for Nagatoro as well. Good, uh, for, good for both the Africa civs. Any sieve, uh, sorry, any map that they get free livestock is obviously, it's kind of insane when you think about it because you add up how much the livestock are actually worth from a wood or gold perspective when you sell them. Um, it can be crazy. More livestock. Oh, we do have a Sudanese dervish over here. Always, that's like, that's the equivalent of getting the, oh, I can't remember what it's going to be called now, do I? Oh, I can't remember. It's the Pikeman shipment, uh, the Pikeman treasure. But yeah, this is this is like the most important treasure on this map. You always want to search for this treasure. And it's, it's either going to be over here or over here. So you always want to scout for that. But it doesn't look like a tourist. Oh, he does see it, though. It's only guarded by Ethiopian wolves. And his uh, chaos ability is more than capable of dealing with that. I'm not sure why he's uh, not get, not waiting for that. Okay, China is aging up. He's got four villagers uh, building it. Going over the porcelain tower into H2. Now, I've seen this more and more. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing this more and more. Using Going up with the porcelain tower into H2. Normally, you would see it in H3. But yeah, going up with the porcelain tower in H2. Its trickle's not going to be as good if it was H3, but it's still going to be good. Going up with the French consulate as well. That shows me that... Uh, he did get the food tech because he's aging up at this sort of time, yeah. So he got the the food tech from the consulate, which gives free 400 food. I think it might be 300 food. Age up with the porcelain tower. What's he going to put that on? He's switching it instantly to gold. Basically, everyone right now on food. 700 gold is going to be his first shipment. So it does look like he's going to do be doing a, a fast fortress. Not a standard fast fortress, but a fortress nonetheless. 
Go have a look over at Nagatoro. See what he's up to. And look at this. Would you believe it? Of course, we're going to see the Sudanese Red Sea trade. That's going to give him the two Red Sea wagons. Such an OP tech, man. Such an OP tech because you essentially it essentially comes for free with your age up resources. Um, the, the 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 resources, the export that it gives you on age up pays for it. It's so insane. Honestly, it needs to be a uh, it needs to be worth more because it's just insane. And now we have this classic uh, triple racks. We call this. This is this is essentially the Ethiopia triple rack spam um, rush, but. Nagatoro, he did ship the Big Benny first as well. So has he sold that yet? No, he hasn't. But look how much this Big Benny is worth right now. It was like seven, almost 750 word. Holy cow. You see the joke there? Holy cow. Get it? Okay. Yeah. Funny. Ha 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 ha. Um, now he's going up with 700 wood. So literally not going to put anyone on wood. Just all of this wood is going to come from two shipments. He is going greedy though. He's going for these Abans. So that's interesting. Again, another thing people people don't seem to forget that Abans are actually really good. Look at this thing. It's gathering 0.65 coin and 0.22 influence. These mountain monasteries are an equivalent of an Aban as well. So he currently has two mountain monasteries plus, what was that, three, four, five. So essentially seven, seven Abans in total right now. And that's all he needs. That is all he needs on gold. Yes, they cost, what, 150 gold or something? But that is kind of insane. We do have, uh, on top of this, we have eight Gascanias now diving in. Takes out a villager. Probably going to take out the explorer now as well. Gascania, again, just something else that makes Ethiopia that much lamer is that they have 4.5 speed, so... Um, Ashigarus aren't the only uh, OP musketeer in the game anymore. There's actually lots of OP musketeers these days. They, they also get a buff of their fire rate. So they're basically just Ashigarus, but better. Oh, that explorer surviving on 9 HP. Surely not. It's got the same amount of speed. <laughs> Might actually get away with that. Nagatoru now. His third shipment in H2 is going to be 700 gold. Um, could be aging behind this. Could just be going for shuttles. He's not making any more warriors. So it looks like a semi-FF here. A very eco-orientated um, semi-FF here, which is pretty impressive. Oh, he does look. And he ages up as well. So, wow. It's basically got 450 extra HP there. 450 extra HP just for aging up. God damn. People forget about this monk. He currently can have over 1k HP. Holy cow. Okay, so going up with the Summer Palace to age three. That's going to give him, is it 500 food? Oh, wow, no. A thousand food? Uh, wait, is that right? A thousand food? <laughs> I did not know it was that much. A thousand food. He's getting that fast age tech, Cabra Nagast. So he's going to be aging up quickly now when he does age up. Still doing some more harassing with the Musketeers. Porcelain Tower still on gold. 2.5 gold. That's pretty good. What? Four or five villagers on gold? Not bad. Not bad. A thousand food. A thousand food. Let's go have a look over what he's doing. Is he going to decide to play this out in age three? He is shipping some skirmishers. But he's going very heavily on food. Probably going to be shipping 1k gold. And behind all of this, so, I mean, look at the scores already. Already 2k up uh, in score. He's also got free TP. So all of that wood he got from the Big Benny and the 700 wood, he's invested into Stagecoach and free TP. So not only is he going oh, Abon yes. Eco, very heavily Abon Eco here. And that, again, look, he's not putting anyone on gold, and it's a really clever build order. He just puts every, just, just makes like max abans in age two, and just, just puts the rest of a, uh, you know, ships 700 wood and Big Benny, and then just puts all of his villagers on food. It's a very, very efficient and effective um, way of just, you know, of resources, of eco, really. So it's actually really, really smart. <clears throat> and the only down payment. Is a couple of shipments and making some abans, which are 150 gold, which oh, pay yes. for themselves 
pretty damn quickly. They do cost two pop as well, but the amount of wood you get here, that's not a problem. He's now upping these gas Kenya. That will up the shuttles and the Neftenia as well. I definitely think the shuttle warriors, because they're more of a more of a cavalry unit. Surely they should go into the other um elite cavalry. Surely they should they should not they should not come in that bit. But hey, that's that's just me. Um, again, look at this. 25, but it's, it's more than 25. His eco is really, really good right now. Really, really strong, actually. He's got another mountain monastery down, so that's basically a sick Fabin. And he's he split his abbons really like nicely here as well. So these mountain monasteries, these gold mines are going to last a long time. Shipping the big Sebastable Mortar. And what's China's response going to be to this? He's aging up already. Did he ship 1k coin? He did. He shipped the 1k coin. And just went in straight into industrial for it. Like I said, he's going up with a white pagoda as well. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And this is going to give him. This is going to give him a load of disciples. Right, so this gives him ten disciples and a sacred vault, and has a sacred vault which increases the stats of the Shaolin master and disciples, and the latter's train limit. Uh, so he's building that with how many villagers? Max villagers, yeah, eight villagers. And uh, how's he going to deal with Spastical Mortar though? doesn't have that many units. He's just got a rag band of ragtag units. He's now uh, getting British allies coming in. And oh, 15 disciples diving in for it. Oh, look at this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just beheaded the Sebastopol Mortar. And look how many disciples there are. Holy cow, that's scary. With the skirmishes behind this, the British allies from the Red Coats coming in at the perfect time there. Um, I, I guess he shipped intervention as well at some point. Wow, what, what a timing attack there. Well, that's one way to deal with the Sebastopol Mortar. <laughs> War Academy going down now. Horse and Tower, let's change that to go onto wood. He bought back his Explorer, I think. Uh, it's like 200 coin, 250 coin or something. But I think that is effective. Definitely worthwhile doing to give uh, two fa over 2,000 HP and to be able to build more of these uh, Disciples, which now have 190 HP and 23 hand attack. They're effective against Skirmishers more so than Musketeers, but still, they're not bad. Especially not bad with almost 200 HP. Okay, two Flying Crows coming in. Now he's only now is he getting a load of market techs. Wow, but he's still down 6k score. Oh, it does not look good for him. But this is China. Can he get a death ball go going? And oh my goodness me, with this eco that Nagatora has, he triple racks in their tenure right now. He's actually going for a couple of cauldrons as well. So he's obviously got this um this mini fort um to be able to get the tech that gives him European um artillery. Which do shadow tech, by the way, but he's only in 83 at the moment. So he's got a couple of culverins, and that's actually uh, kind of blind culverins. So he's 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 guessed right, though. He just pure guessed that there was going to be a couple of flying crows coming in here. And, oh, they're going to do well versus the flying crows, but they don't kill it in one. And are the flying crows going to get a shot off? They're bunched together. <laughs> he got the double kill. Both flying crows survived. Holy cow. Okay, now this is scary. Now this is scary for Nagatoro. With all of his eco, the, the huge eco advantage he's got right now. China don't care. He's almost down. Like, look at the score. 5k score down. But he's got the tempo. <laughs> and these flying crows, they do so much damage. Industrial flying crows are so deadly. They're very slow and clunky. But they do have 28 range. And they do so much damage. Look at the damage. Five area of effect. Two multis versus buildings. They are very, very scary. And now, what does he have to deal with? I mean, that is a huge mass, though. He's starting to make some shotter warriors by the looks of it. He's got another cauldron coming in. That's going to take a while to kill both of these flying crows. Wow, look how many more skirmishes coming in. That's a huge amount of skirmishes. China backing up. Oh, you don't want to be attacking the shuttles. That flying crow needs to be killing the skirms. Oh, there was a misfire there as well. 
Nagatoro has got insane eco right now, but what's Japan got? Sorry, Japan, not Japan. What am I talking about? China now making some cab. Interesting, making iron flails as well. Shipping, you get seven of them. You get eight meteor hammers as well. Iron, fla uh, iron uh, flails, very heavy cavalry. Uh, he's actually making the Forbidden Army as well. I mean, he's on 39 vils, to be fair. His eco is pretty good. And don't forget, he's got that white pagoda as well. So he's just able to get an insane amount of instant army with these disciples. Instant army. On top of that, this explorer has 2,282 HP to tank. So insane. Like, put a value on that, bro. Put a value on that. Nagatoro just, wow, just allowing these disciples to get in there. But over the, the iron flail pop came in from the rear. And look at this sandwich now. Oh my goodness me, he's down 5k score, but is this going to be enough to bring it back? Is the cat going to stay alive long enough? There's disciples picking roundhouse, picking everywhere, punching these guys with spears. So many skirmishes still alive as well. The cap just about go down and... Oh, was it enough? Was it enough? The scores are still kind of equal, staying how they are. <laughs> Look how much this guy's at the front is tanking. And again, more instant army. And somehow he's coming out on top again. And disciples have multis versus light infantry, I believe. Well, they certainly used to. Doesn't it? Well, maybe they don't anymore. But they, they're effective against uh, light infantry. And more forbidden army coming in. Villager pool. They're getting desperate. But the more coyotes, more shot of warriors coming in as well. Oh, I've got just critical attacks everywhere. Look, 46 critical attacks. They're disciples doing 46 attack damage. And oh my goodness me. I did not expect that turnaround. I did not expect that turnaround. <laughs> H4 White Pagoda is scary. And even with Nagatoro's insane eco this game. Oh, look, his Abans, it looks like they just about run out of resources. They did, look. Uh, it was just like the perfect timing. He ran out of resources with his Abans. Having to rebuild mountain monasteries. And uh, yeah, just like that. Free TP stagecoach, untouched all game. Wow. Those, that China, China death ball is still real, guys. All of these insane cards, 17 skirms, seven iron flowers, eight meteor hammers coming in there as well. Oh, <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Ended on 40 vils, single TC the entire game. He had that porcelain tower, which is an extra four or five villagers to boost from the from age two. A thousand food from the summer palace. White pagoda giving him an insane amount of units there and just instant army. Wow, I did. He's still down 2k score even at the end of the game. Look at the resource. Look at that eco. But did not matter. And what a build order from China there. The, a the age one monastery. <laughs> His most made unit <laughs> was disciples. Oh, brilliant. Look at the unit, military unit count. And Nagatora had the, the superior military count the entire time. But that pop, those, those are iron flail pops. That iron flail pop to put those skirmishes in that sandwich. Oh, that was beautiful. That was just beautiful. What a game. What a game. And I don't know what either that guy is. Uh, I love the, we'll call him Dick. I mean, you've got to call someone Dick. And, uh, you know, what a way to lose to someone being called Dick.